In this video, we will discuss solving quadratic equations by factoring. All right, when we first started talking about factoring, I was I told you that one of the main reasons why we go through this process of learning how to factor is so that we can eventually solve equations. Earlier on in this course, we went through the whole process of solving linear equations in one variable. Now that we've introduced polynomials, we want to solve equations that involve x to a power that's higher than 1, meaning that it's a uh, a nonlinear type equation um, dealing with polynomials. And so this <clears throat> video, we're going to focus on quadratic equations. What I mean by quadratic equations are equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, that's basically a second degree polynomial in an equation, right? We got an equal sign. And all before, when we were dealing with factoring, we were looking at just simplifying or changing the look of an expression. Once we see a statement with an equal sign initially in there, we need to solve for x or solve for some variable. All right. And that's what comes into play when we're talking about quadratic equations. Some examples of quadratic equations are these two examples. Notice that they both have an x squared in them. All right. Now, when I say it can be written in this form, that means it can look like this. It'll look like this right here. Notice that this second equation here, x squared minus 9, doesn't have the bx part, but it does have the c. The only requirement with these equations is that I do have an x squared, right? As long as the highest power on our variable is 2 um, and it's a polynomial, I know that it is a quadratic equation. A non-example of a quadratic equation is this example here. Um, even though this is a non-example, we should be able to still solve this by factoring because we know how to factor this type of equation here. All right. One of the things or the main tools that helps us solve these types of equations is called the zero factor property of real numbers. And basically that property just states that if I multiply two numbers, all right, so if in this statement here I say if A times B equals zero, meaning if I multiply two things and their product is zero or their result is zero, then at least one of them has to be zero because zero times anything is zero. So either A equals zero or B equals zero. This is the property that we're going to use in order to help us solve these quadratic equations. Let's first look at an example where we just look at using the zero factor property to solve an equation. All right. In this equation here, I have x plus six times two x minus three equals zero. I want you to notice here that I have two things that multiply together to give me zero. The first thing I'm multiplying is x plus six and I'm <coughs> excuse me. And I'm multiplying that by two x minus three. So by this zero factor property up here, I can solve this equation by setting the first thing equal to zero, which is this x plus six, and that'll give me my solution. Or my solution is going to come from setting the second factor equal to zero, which is that two x minus three. And now what we have here is two linear equations. All right. This equation is linear because the exponent on this variable is understood to be one here as well as one here. And so we already know the process of solving linear equations. And so I'm going to go through that process here. I'm going to subtract six from both sides here. And I'm going to get x equals negative six. Here I can add three to both sides to cancel out that minus three. I get 2x equals 3, and then I can divide both sides by 2, and I'll get x equals 3 halves. So that means my solution set, remember we said we can write our solution set in the squiggly brackets, it includes negative 6 and 3 halves. All right, so that's using our zero factor property in order to help us solve these types of equations. Let's look at part B. This is another example. Here again, I have x and it's multiplied by 4x plus 9 and it's equal to 0. I have two things that multiply together to give me 0. If I want to solve for x, I'm going to have to set each of them equal to 0 by using that zero factor property. So I get as part of my solution x equals 0 or my solution is going to come from 4x plus 9 equals 0. All right, this one's already solved for us, and so I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides in this other equation. I get 4x equals negative 9. And then finally, I can divide both sides by 4, and I'll get the x equals negative 9 fourths. 
And so my solution set in this example will include 0 and negative 9 fourths. Notice here, it, I don't care which order you write your solution in these sets of parentheses here, um, uh, in the set of brackets here. It's just a, a list of numbers. All right, but that's our zero factor property. So what we're going to see here is we're going to end up starting with equations that look like these types of equations. We're going to have to factor them, and then they'll look like these equations that we just found here. For instance, it'll look like that, or it'll look like this previous example that we just got finished doing. Let's look at some examples where we do that. All right, I have x squared minus 12x plus 20 equals 0. I can't solve this because I have an x squared there, so my only option is to reduce that exponent so that I can get linear, linear equations, and the only way for me to do that is to factor. So I'm going to factor this, right? Notice there's a 1 in front of the x squared, and there's no GCF, right? I got to keep all that in mind. And in order for me to factor this, I know it factors into two binomials, I want to find two numbers that multiply to give me 20, but add up to negative 12. A negative 2 and a negative 10 would work. And so now I have a, an equation that looks like a perfect setup for that zero factor property. I have two things that multiply together and their product is zero. So if I'm going to solve for x, I'm going to set each of them equal to zero to find my solution. So either x minus 2 equals zero or x minus 10 equals zero. That's where my solutions are going to come from. Here, I can add 2 to both sides, and I'm going to get x equals 2. Here, I can add 10 to both sides, and I'm going to get x equals 10. So my solution in a solution set is 2 and 10. And remember, your solution set involves the numbers that, hey, if I plug them back into this equation, this original equation where I'm given, then they will satisfy both sides of those equations. So again, you can always check your solutions in these types of examples here. Let's go to part B here. I have x squared plus 11x equals 6x plus 24. All right. Notice here that our goal is to use the zero factor property. In order for me to use the zero factor property, one side of this equation has to be zero, either this side or that side. Since my x squared is over here on the left hand side, I'm going to move the 6x and a 24x to the other side by subtracting them from both sides. All right, and I'm going to try to do that in one step, right? I'm going to subtract 6x and 24 from both sides. And I know this looks a little weird here, but I can do that in one step. All right, and again, the only reason why I want to do that is so that I can have 0 on that right-hand side over there so I can use my 0 factor property. x squared is going to stay the same. Notice here I can combine this 11x and this 6x, and that's going to give me a positive 5x. And that minus 24 doesn't combine with anything, so it stays a minus 24. Notice here on the right-hand side, the 6x is cancel and the 24 is cancel, and I'm left with 0. All right? So I need 0 on one side of the equation before I even go thinking about factoring. All right? Now that 0 is on that other side, let's factor. There's a 1 in front of the x squared. There's uh, no GCF. So I know I'm going to put an x here, x here. I want to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 but add up to 5. Those two numbers will be a positive 8 and a negative 3. Now I have two things that multiplies together to give me 0. So I'm going to set them both equal to 0 so I can solve for x. Notice here, once again, we've gone from having a quadratic equation to having two linear equations. Right? That's the goal here. Because trying to solve something with an exponent is very difficult when the exponent is not 1. And so factoring allows us to solve equations where our exponents are 1. All right? But in order to solve this equation here, I subtract 8 from both sides, and I'm going to get x equals negative 8. And here I'm going to add 3 to both sides, and I'm going to get x equals 3. All right? And so if I want to write this as a solution set, I can write it as negative 8 and 3. And again, always remember, when you solve an equation, these are the values that if you plug into that original equation that you're giving, given, it would be a true uh, equation when you substitute those values in. Let's look at a couple more. In this example here, part C, of course, we want to want to be able to solve any type of um, quadratic equation by factoring. Um, sometimes the coefficients are fractions and that is perfectly fine all right this example 1 6 x squared minus 1 3rd x minus 4 equals 0 now remember that our goal here is to factor 
In the processes of factoring that we've discussed, we hadn't looked at examples that involved fractions. And so since we hadn't done that, one way to solve these equations is to get rid of the fractions. And so that's what I'm going to do. Just like when we cleared fractions when we had linear equations, what we did was we found the lowest common denominator. Here our denominators are 6 and 3. If I think about the multiples of 6 and 3, the least common multiple of 6 and 3 is 6. All right, you could do 12, but that's not the least common multiple. That's just a common multiple. But 6 is the smallest number that um, is a multiple of both 6 and 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 6. All right, and remember, when you're dealing with an equation and you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other, right? Now, since that is the case, I am now going to distribute this 6 to each of these terms here. I'm going to have a 6 times a 1 6 x squared minus a 6 times 1 3rd x minus a 6 times 4 equals 0, right? When I multiply the 6 and the 1 6, I'm just going to be left with an x squared. 3 goes into 6 2 times. It goes into itself once. And so I'm going to get minus 2x minus 24. And 0 times 6 is still 0. All right. And now I have an equation that looks like this. Right. So I went from having these fractions. I cleared the fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator. And now I'm ready to factor so that I can use my zero factor property in order to solve this equation. So let's go ahead and solve by factoring first. I'm going to put an x here and an x here. I want to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 but add up to negative 2. The two numbers that work for me are negative 6 and positive 4. And now I have two things that multiply this to give me 0, these two factors here. And so by that 0 factor property, I'm going to set each of those factors equal to 0 to solve for x. So I get x minus 6 equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. All right. Now, I can add 6 to both sides to solve for x here. I get x equals 6. And I can subtract 4 from both sides here to solve for x. And I'm going to get x equals negative 4. So as a solution set, I get 6 and negative 4 as my two solutions. Okay. One last example involving quadratic equations. This example here. Initially, this type of example doesn't look like it's quadratic, but it actually is. Just so you'll agree with me, remember, if you were to FOIL this out, right, x times x is x squared, not 4, I'm sorry, use the distributive property. x times x is x squared, and x times 3 is 3x, and so you do see that x squared in there. So although it doesn't look quadratic, it still is a quadratic equation, and so we're going to solve it using the same methods. Now, the difference here is that this side right here, it looks like it's already factored, all right? Now, that would be awesome. It would be great if this side was zero, all right? But since this side is not zero, and in order to solve these using the zero factor property, I need zero on one side of this equation, then I've got to un... I've got to distribute this, th this stuff here on this side and get the 70 from being on that side and make it zero in order for me to solve, all right? And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to distribute the x. And as you're going to see, again, we get the x squared minus 3x equals 70. And again, I need zero to be on this side of my equation here. And so I'm going to subtract 70 from both sides. And I'm going to get x squared minus 3x minus 70 equals zero. And now it looks like one of those that we can just factor and then solve. And so I'm going to go ahead and factor. Notice there's no GCF, no greatest common factor. Co leading coefficient is 1. I want to find two numbers that multiply to give me negative 7 but add up to a negative 3. Those two lucky numbers would be negative 10 and a positive 7. And now I have that factored, so I can find my solutions by setting each of those factors equal to 0. And then I can solve for x by adding 10 to both sides on this equation here. I get x equals 10. And by subtracting 7 from both sides of this equation here, I'm going to get x equals negative 7. And so my two solutions, I can write them as a solution set, include 10 and negative 7. This includes our video 
concludes our video on solving quadratic equations by factoring.